Hey everybody, it's Facebook 435 and I'm here to show you what I've been working on for the past few days. Um, so I've been working with LibGDX and I've been trying to create a game engine which can be reused to um, be used on 2D games in general, uh, mostly top-down games, some of our RPGs, uh, things like that. So for the past few days, probably like four or five days, I've been pretty busy lately. Um, I've been working on this probably for like 20 minutes to an hour each day. Um, but I pretty much created the engine so right now it's my little private engine but I want to show you what I did with it so far so along with the engine comes a map maker uh, which I also created so it the two work together so if I was to create a game using the game engine I can use the map maker to make maps for the game that's using the game engine and then pretty much it will work interchangeably so I mean I can use any map I make in here um, in my games which makes things very easy to develop um, so I'm going to create a new map really quick. Um, uh, we'll make the width uh, 30 and we'll make the height 30. So this is what we start out with. Um, I'm going to fill it. So you have a bunch of buttons over here. You have all your tiles up here. I'm using a tile map, which, or not even a tile map, it's just a bunch of tiles I put together. Um, I'm going to fill this page with the tiles. Um, and then now from here you can see the different buttons. So we have all the tiles up here, like I said. We have the different layers. We have the ground layer and the top layer. Um, so if I was to set a ground layer as a rock, it would show up as black. But if I were to remove that by right-clicking and set the grass, but then go to the top layer and set the rock, then it would show up normally. Um, same, with, same thing with the trees. So that's how that works. Um, I also have entities added in. So this works as well. I also have saving, of course. Um, just load that back up to show you. So it has saving as well. Um, the entities work pretty well um, also. I'm pretty proud of them, what I did with them. So these entities can be used and loaded into your actual, or into the game that would be used with the game engine. And they can get different information. Now the different information, let me just place an entity down really quick. We will make an entity right here. If I want the um, player, if I want the entity to be a player, I type negative one. Otherwise I type whatever entity I would put in. And then this ID, pretty much will link up to the ID of an en of an entity in your actual game itself. So then you can get the entity and load it where it's supposed to be loaded on the map and put it there. So it's very, very simple to use. So say I had entity 1 here. It's going to put an E right there. Um, I'm going to put some trees around here. Oops, cancel. Place tiles. I'm going to put some trees around here. Wait a second. Alright. Put some trees around him. Um, what kind of makes like a box looking thing. I'm just going to make like, a small room here. So this is your little camera moving thing as well. Uh, Alright, so say we had this. And say I wanted to make a room up here, which the player might be in, or another entity maybe. And I just want to pretty much connect them all. Alright, so we have that. Um, I'm going to place the player up here, oops. Um, place the player up here, so that's the player. Now what I can do is I can actually go through each entity, so I can select which one I want to work with, so I have the player the entity, and I can actually set a path for it. So I implemented the A star um, algorithm for pathfinding. Um, I did it within about an hour uh, using just, I read a bunch of things online. Uh, it was a little confusing at first, but I wrote my own algorithm um, for the A star method, and it worked pretty easily. So, um, say one of the entity to move here. All I do is click and it gets the path to it. Um, say I wanted him to move all the way up here to the player, he would move all the way up there and you can set different paths that your entities can go by. So say that you wanted a game where um, we're pretty much, let me remove this, you wanted an entity, entity to go back and forth down the hall. I'll say this is the hall for now looking for the player and if he walks into the player's site then he's going to go attack them whatever so pretty much I can have the in the game I can have it so that the entity this entity itself you will set the path again by the way if I were to set this path up here it would see the new uh, tiles and then move them over so um, I'll set the path to here and then pretty much this entity can walk back and forth looking for the player and from there I mean you can do whatever you want in your actual game so you can for example um, have them attack the player like I said you can I don't know really honestly whatever you want to do with it so that's that um, and it works very well so I mean it's let me show you one of the things that I made um, also it also saves as well so if I were to come back into here and just reload it 
and I go to edit entities and I click on E. Oh, I removed it, didn't I? Alright, now let's save it. and it's loaded there. Um, I mean you can do the same for the player too, but the player obviously it wouldn't make sense to actually have a path for him, so say I wanted to set a path for him, I can make him move down here, but obviously the player moves on his own, so um, that's that. Um, that's my phone. Um, yeah, let me show you the one that I made, so I have one called Map3, this is a little bit more uh, into it, so let me remove that guy. Oops. Move him. Alright, so say that I wanted to move this entity here to here. It's going to find all of the... It's going to find the way very, very quickly, as you can tell. Um, nothing too hard about it. So say I want to move him here. Alright, now say we deselect him, or whatever, you save it, change something. Say that we remove this tree right here. When you go back, it's still going to be the same, but if I do set path and I click it there, it automatically updates to the new changes. So that's another good thing about the map maker. Um, so that's what I've been doing lately. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to start making a game. So it's going to be an Android game. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. It's probably going to be like a... I can't even tell you, honestly. I'm going to have to plan something out and think of it. But um, this is my game engine, my map maker. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.